will begin the 15th lecture on Jeremiah. Today, we will begin with chapter 30. The title is, The Lord Will Discipline with Justice. First, the promise that the people taken captive to Babylon will return. Verses 1 through 3. Second, the remaining people in Judah will encounter troubles and then be saved. Verses 4 through 10. Third, God will save the people but discipline them with justice. Verses 11 through 15. Fourth, God strikes those who strike believers. Verses 16 through 17. Fifth, the Lord restores Jacob's tents. Verses 18 through 22. Sixth, the Lord's judgment and the believer's understanding. Verses 23 through 24. Read verses 1 through 2. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Write in a book all the words I have spoken to you. God told Jeremiah to record in a book all the words of God. Verse 3. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people, Israel and Judah, back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their forefathers to possess. God promised that the people who were taken captive to Babylon would return to the land of Canaan. The people would return to Canaan if they carried the yoke of Babylon and were freed from the land. Verse 4 These are the words the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. The people who remained in Judah would receive great hardships as a result of their sins. Those who remained would receive great pain like a woman in labor. Verse 8 In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. God said that he would break off the yoke of Babylon. God said that the people would later return from Babylon. Here in verse 9, it says the people will serve David. It says to serve David their king. This refers to Christ, who was to come in the future through David's lineage. This is a prophecy that people would be saved through faith in Christ. Verse 10 So do not fear, O Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, O Israel, declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. God promised that he would save the Israelites from a distant place, and that they would return from the land of their exile. Then the people would gain peace and security in Canaan.
God will give us peace and security when we obey God's commands. Verse 11. I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord, though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only with justice. God would judge the nations that took Israel captive. However, Israel will not be completely destroyed, but will be saved. However, God said that he would justly discipline the sins of Israel. We had no choice but to be eternally destroyed as a result of our sins. However, we have been saved through the cross of Jesus Christ. Job chapter 5 verse 17 says, Blessed are those who are disciplined by God. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 8 through 10. Verse 12, This is what the Lord says, your wound is incurable, your injury beyond healing. God said that the wound of the Israelites cannot be cured at the time of his discipline. Verse 14, All your allies have forgotten you. They care nothing for you. All of their allies will run away when God disciplines the people. There will be people who will betray them. It is no use for us to depend on people. Verse 16 But all who devour you will be devoured. All your ex enemies will go into exile. Those who plunder you will be plundered. God helps believers who repent. The Lord watches over us. Verse 17 But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. God will heal the Israelites and restore their health. Job chapter 5 verses 17 through 19. Verse 18. This is what the Lord says. I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins, and the palace will stand in its proper place. God said that he would restore the fortunes of Israel. God blesses believers when they repent and return to God. He gives them spiritual blessings and eternal blessings. Verse 21 Their leader will be one of their own. Their ruler will arise from among them. I will bring him near and he will come close to me. For who is he who will devote himself to be close to me, declares the Lord. This is a prophecy that Christ would come from Judah. We cannot go before God if it isn't for the grace of Christ's redemption. We can go before God through Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12 John chapter 14 verse 6 verses 23 through 24 
See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a driving wind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. In days to come, you will understand this. God burned with wrath for all the nations. God would destroy all nations. Then all believers would understand that God is alive, and that God judges the world with justice. We will continue the lecture with Chapter Thirty One. The title is "Set Up Road Signs." First, the Lord pours out His abundant grace on the Israelites, verses one through nine. Second, the people will rejoice through the ransom of Jacob. Verses ten through fourteen. Third, weeping for captivity and God's salvation. Verses fifteen through twenty. Fourth, Christ will create a new thing. Verses twenty one through thirty. Fifth, the Lord gives a new covenant. Verses thirty one through thirty seven. Sixth, Jerusalem will be rebuilt. Read verse one. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they will be my people. God said that He would be the God of all the clans of Israel. God blesses families. The Lord will come and be with families as Emmanuel. Verse two. This is what the Lord says: the people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert. I will come to give rest to Israel. Those who survive the sword are those who have run away from the war. However, God will give Israel rest. Verse three. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, "I have loved you with an everlasting love." The past refers to the time when God led the Israelites out of Egypt. God poured out His everlasting love and benevolence on the people. God unchangingly loved Israel. Verse four. I will build you up again, and you will be rebuilt. O virgin Israel, God said that He would rebuild Israel. God would receive them with joy. Then the Israelites would dance with joy and go before God. Verse five. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. Verse six. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, "Come, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God." Samaria and Ephraim indicate northern Israel. The people of southern Judah and northern Israel would all return. This means that numerous people in the New Testament times will return to God and be saved. Verse seven. This is what the Lord says: 
sing with joy for Jacob, shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. All the nations will praise God, the head of all nations, when Israel is restored. God is the head of all nations. God will bring Israel back to the north land from captivity. They will cry with thanksgiving when they return. They will cry with thanksgiving. Verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. God scattered Israel when the people sinned. However, God would allow them to return when they repented. God will bring them back again. God led Israel like a shepherd who leads his flock. In verse 11, God redeems Israel. In verse 12, God spiritually blesses Israel like a well-watered garden. This means that there will be no more sorrow but joy. Verse 15 This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because her children are no more. Ramah is located near Bethlehem. It is where Rachel's grave is. When Judah was taken captive by the Babylonian army, the captives were assembled in Ramah near Bethlehem. This verse indicates that the captivity of Israel is sorrowful like Rachel weeping for her children. This is a poetic expression. Just as this verse prophesied, many children in Bethlehem were slaughtered at the time of Jesus' birth. Matthew chapter 2 verse 18 Verse 16 this is what the Lord says, Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. Now the people of Israel would return by God's might. Therefore God comforted them and told them not to cry. Verse 18, I have surely heard Ephraim's mourning. You disciplined me like an unruly calf, and I have been disciplined. Restore me, and I will return, because you are the Lord my God. This means that Israel will repent and return. Ephraim refers to northern Israel. This means that all of Israel from the north to Judah in the south will repent. Verse 20 Is not Ephraim my dear son, the child in whom I delight? Though I often speak against him, I still remember him. Therefore my heart yearns for him. 
I have great compassion for him, declares the Lord. God disciplined Ephraim because he was God's beloved son. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 5 through 6 God disciplines his loving children. God loves and has compassion on his children. Verse 21 Set up road signs, put up guideposts. Take note of the highway, the road that you take. Return, O virgin Israel, return to your towns. It says set up road signs. These are signposts. This means to set up road signs so that people can return safely to Canaan from captivity in Babylon. This is the road to salvation. This is the road to blessings. John chapter 14 verse 6. It also says, take note of the highway, the road that you take. It says, return. This means to walk in the road of faith, in the road of the truth. Chapter 6, verse 16. We must walk down the old road, the correct road. Verse 22. How long will you wander, O faithful daughter? Here it says a woman will surround a man. This signifies the Virgin Mary holding Jesus Christ after his birth. Verse 23 This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and in its towns will once again use these words, The Lord bless you, O righteous dwelling, O sacred mountain. God would bring the people of Judah back from captivity. Judah will be rebuilt and will become beautiful. Verse 25 I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. God satisfies the faint. God will meet us when we return to Him with all our hearts. Chapter 29, verse 13. Verse 27. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and of animals. God pulled out and forsook Israel when they sinned in the past. Psalm chapter 121 verse 4 verses 29 through 30 In those days the people will no longer say the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are on the are on edge. There is a saying the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. This means that children are punished for their father's sins. However, that will never happen again. Everyone will be punished for his own sins. Verse 31 the time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 
The new covenant is the covenant of salvation from Christ's redemption and faith in Christ. The covenant of the Old Testament is the laws. The laws of the Old Testament were given through Moses. The covenant of the Old Testament was weak. The law could not make the Israelites complete. Romans chapter 8 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 18. Therefore God gave his people a new covenant in the New Testament. Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 4. Therefore the new covenant is the covenant of Christ's redemption. This new covenant allows man to be born again through the truth and a spiritual inspiration. The new covenant is the forgiveness of sins through faith in Christ. Thus, believers become God's children and God's people. In verse 34, God says that He would forgive the sins of the people and their wickedness. God would no longer remember their sins. Verse 35 This is what the Lord says, He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is His name. Verse 36 Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will the descendants of Israel ever cease to be a nation before me. God appointed a natural order that can never change. In the same way, the new covenant will never change. God will fulfill it. Verse 38 The days are coming, declares the Lord, when this city will be rebuilt for me from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate. The Israelites will return from Babylon and rebuild Jerusalem. The Tower of Hananel is located in the eastern corner of the Jerusalem wall. Nehemiah chapter 3 verse 1 Zechariah chapter 14 verse 10 The corner gate is the western corner. 2 Kings chapter 14 verse 13 2 Chronicles chapter 26 verse 9 Verse 39 The measuring line will stretch from there straight to the hill of Gareb and then turn to Goa. Jerusalem will be measured for reconstruction. Verse 40 The whole valley where dead bodies and ashes are thrown, and all the terraces out to the Kidron Valley on the east, as far as the corner of the horse gate, will be holy to the Lord. The city will never again be uprooted or demolished. Jerusalem will be holy to the Lord. They will construct God's kingdom. 
Later, they would build a new Jerusalem. God builds an eternal kingdom of heaven. In the same way, Israel will return to Jerusalem and rebuild the city. We will continue with Jeremiah chapter thirty-two. The title is Jeremiah is confined in the courtyard. First, Jeremiah is confined in the courtyard, verses one through five. Second, God teaches through documents, verses six through fifteen. Third, Jeremiah's prayer of petition, verses sixteen through twenty-five. Fourth, Israel and Judah are ruined as a result of their sins, verses twenty-six through thirty-five. Fifth, prophecy that Israel will be restored, verses thirty-six through forty-four. Read verse one. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. This is a story of what happened during the tenth year. Of Zedekiah, king of Judah. At the time, the Babylonian army besieged Jerusalem. Jeremiah was confined in the courtyard of the royal palace. He was imprisoned there. Verse three. Now Zedekiah, king of Judah, had imprisoned him there, saying, "Why do you prophesy as you do? You say this is what the Lord says: I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will capture it." Jeremiah prophesied. God said that the city would be handed over to Babylon. King Zedekiah would not be able to escape. Zedekiah would be taken captive to Babylon. Jeremiah was put in prison and encountered hardships by preaching God's word. Chapter twenty, verse two. Chapter thirty-seven, verse eleven. Chapter thirty-eight, verse six. Chapter forty, verse one. Verse six. Jeremiah said, "The word of the Lord came to me." God instructed Jeremiah. Hanamel, son of Shalom, your uncle. Is going to come to you and say, "Buy my field at Anathoth." Then God commanded Jeremiah to buy the field. Judah would soon be destroyed, and Jeremiah was in prison. However, Jeremiah obeyed God's command. He bought his cousin's field. This was a prophecy that the cities and lands of Judah would be restored, and the people would buy from one another. Then the people would buy and sell land from one another. Verse eight. Then, just as the Lord said, my cousin Hanamel came to me and said. Buy my field at Anathoth in the territory of Jerusalem. I knew that this was the word of the Lord. God told Jeremiah to buy his cousin's field. 
In verse nine, Jeremiah buys the land for seventeen shekels of silver. Verse fifteen. For this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says: Houses, fields, and vineyards will again be bought in this land. God told Jeremiah to seal the deed of purchase before witnesses. Then the deed of purchase was stored in a clay jar. This prophesies that Israel would be restored and people would buy and sell houses and land from one another. Verse sixteen. After I had given the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, I prayed to the Lord. Jeremiah storing the deed of purchase teaches that Judah would be restored in the far future. Jeremiah prayed a prayer of petition to God. Jeremiah lamented as he thought of Babylon's captivity of Jerusalem in the future. Verse eighteen. You shall love to thousands, but bring the punishment for the fathers' sins into the laps of their children after them. God pours out His grace upon many people. Here it says that God brings the punishment for the fathers' sins into the laps of their children. Exodus chapter twenty, verse five. This means that the effects of sin last into the third and fourth generations. Children also follow their father's examples of sin, and therefore they too will be punished. Verse nineteen: Your eyes are open to all the ways of men. God's eyes are open to all the ways of men. And he rewards everyone according to his conduct. Verse twenty. You performed miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt, and have continued them to this day, both in Israel and among all mankind. God saved the Israelites out of Egypt. With miraculous signs and wonders, by His great strength, God led them to the land of Canaan. In verse twenty, God gave them a land flowing with milk and honey. However, in verse twenty-three, the Israelites did not listen to God's voice. Therefore, God brought disaster upon them. Now Babylon would invade, and Judah would be destroyed. Verses twenty-six through twenty-seven. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah: I am the Lord, the God of mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Our God is the God of all mankind. He is not only the God of Judah, but is the God of all nations. Verse twenty-eight. Therefore, this is what the Lord says: I am about to hand this city over to the Babylonians and to Nebuchadnezzar. King of Babylon, who will capture it? 
the people of Judah served idols from the past. Therefore, God was going to bring the Babylonians to burn down Jerusalem. This was because Judah did evil and provoked the Lord to anger. Verse 33. They turned their backs to me and not their faces. They would not listen or respond to discipline. The people of Judah turned their faces away from God. They turned their backs to God and their hearts were turned towards the world. God taught them again and again, but the people did not listen. Then they served idols. Verse 36. You are saying about this city, By the sword, famine, and plague, it will be handed over to the king of Babylon. But this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Therefore God would send the sword, famine, and plague to Israel. However, in verse 37, God said that he would bring them back if they repented and stood upright. Verse 39. I will give them singleness of heart and action, so that they will always fear me for their own good. The singleness of heart is the heart of the born-again spirit. This is God saving the chosen believers through Jesus Christ so that they could be born again and saved. Singleness of action is the truth of Christ. Our born again spirits must receive God's truth and walk down the road of truth. Then we can receive blessings. Verse 40 I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good to them, and I will inspire them to fear me, so that they will never turn away from me. God does not leave believers because he wants to bless them. The Lord makes an everlasting covenant with them. God saves people through Christ's unchanging covenant. Therefore, we must revere God. Verse 41 I will rejoice in doing them good and will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and soul. God will plant the people in Canaan and protect them. God said that he would never again uproot them from the land of Canaan. This means that they would receive complete salvation through God. God would allow the people to remain in the promised land if they returned to God and repented. God would make them increase in number. Verse 42 This is what the Lord says, As I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so I will give them all the prosperity I have promised them. God said that he would bless the people instead of bringing calamity on them. 
God would bless them if they repented and returned. God would give them great blessings, peace, and rest. Verse forty-three. Once more, fields will be bought in this land, of which you will say, "It is a desolate waste, without men or animals." For it has been handed over to the Babylonians. God would bring the people of Judah back from captivity in Babylon. Thus, they would again buy land in Judah. This means that God will restore them. In verse forty-four, the people of Judah buy land, and deeds are signed and sealed. This also means that the chosen believers will be saved through Christ. This is a prophecy that believers in the New Testament times will be saved through Christ. Today, people will be blessed through Christ. There is also eternal heaven for us. Here we will conclude the fifteenth lecture on Jeremiah.